Hey team players, today we're turning on the neon and talking Seattle Seahawks. Bob, there's some teams that I look at the draft and what they did, and it's like, I get it, it makes sense. And then there's some teams that I'm like, whoa, you guys completely did it wrong. And with Seattle, I feel like I'm in the middle. Because particularly looking at their draft, Seattle historically does not draft small corners and to take Witherspoon at the fifth pick seemed really perplexing to me instead of taking Gonzalez there who I believe is the better player and I'm amazed Gonzalez fell um that part was perplexing to me and the other part that was perplexing to me was in, unless you just couldn't say no to it because he was the first receiver off the board and still have him at 20 was was the receiver from Ohio State um this receiving room is Stacked. I mean, stacked to the max. And when I look at the team, it's like, all right, this team knows what they are. The, the, they want to be a Kenneth Walker machine. And when push comes to shove, they can keep you off balance better than any other team in the league. They were very efficient in their slant game. Um, I think the only team that's really better than that is Philly. So if you got a team that, that's attacking downfield, taking wide receiver screens out of it, pushing the ball, and then you're able to hand it off to one of the best young running backs in the NFL, if not the best young running back in the NFL, dude, that, that's a combination that I am really just happy for Seattle. Um, I think that this team really does have a chance to push for the division. As we were saying with the other teams in this division, the schedule isn't exactly incredibly crazy. The NFC East, I think that these guys have a chance of running the NFC East. That game against Philly will be a very good game. I'm very excited to watch that one. Um, I think these guys crush the Cowboys. And, and, and the other two, I don't think really will have a chance. This team has the ability, when they control the ball, to beat anyone in the NFL. And my whole question with them is, why is the consistency not there when it's said and done? Because we look at certain games last year where they just should have had complete and utter control and they fell apart. Um, yeah, Arizona is, is an example of that, where it's like, why is, it, why is the finish not there? What's going on? And in my estimation, it's the PAX rush needs to step up more. But this is the, the questions I have coming around Seattle as I enter into the season and, and looking around at it. So – Arguably, the worst part of Seattle last year was was their run defense. Mm -hmm. If you looked at when teams played well against them, they controlled the ball. Now, yeah. we said this when we were speaking about the Rams, is that teams that will, on offense, control the ball against you are oftentimes going to beat you. And so, unfortunately for Seattle, they're – biggest foe is in their division the best team that seattle matches up to the worst is the san francisco 49ers and mm -hmm. seattle went out bought back bobby wagner and said okay we're gonna make a concerted effort to make this run defense a little bit better the question is did they do enough i can't say without seeing the unit on the field to say if they did do enough. However, even taking that first step to go out and get some pieces that they needed to say, okay, well, we're going to go out there and get Witherspoon. Yeah, he might not be Gonzalez, but he might fit what we're looking for a little bit better. We're going to go out there and we're going to get players that, like, if you if you read their defense right now, you have Jaron Reed, Draymond Jones, Uchenna Nuwasu, Daryl Taylor, Boye Mafe, Bobby Wagner, Jordan Brooks. I have no problem with Jordan Brooks. He scores real low on a lot of stuff. Um, Bobby Wagner is going to help this team in a lot of ways. Tariq Wolin and Devin Witherspoon at cornerback with Kobe Bryant. Then not 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 the Kobe Bryant, not the Black Mamba. But um, and then Quandre Diggs and Julian Love. This is not the Legion of Boom that we were used to. Mm -hmm. And where this team excels at is in the vertical passing game is in the slant passing game. And what they really excel at as well is balancing the passing game with the running game. 
Mm-hmm. Um, Carroll went out and also drafted um, Charbonnet, right? And yes, he did. Were, and, and, and another running back. And, and people were questioning him. And this comes from NFL.com. And they said, Pete Carroll says, I have so much respect for that position and so much regard for what that weighs into our football team and how we play and the mentality and all of that. It's a really important spot for me too. So when you look at this and you say, and you see that, you think to yourself, okay. I'm hearing handcuff. <laughs> as a fantasy manager, I'm hearing, okay, I'm, I, I'm going to have some problems here. But as a Seattle fan, I'm seeing Pete Carroll's recognizing that I need to hold the, on to the ball late in games. Yeah. I can't just rely on Geno Smith to, to, to vertically throw it down the field. But when I do... I've now paired Jackson Smith in with he's the, one of the best possession wide receivers in co- coming out of college. Mm-hmm. You pair him with Tyler Lockett, who you don't love. Don't but, at all. But I think Jackson Smith will be elevated this year because he'll be able to find his way into the system and not be forced like Zay Flowers is going to be forced to play almost immediately into the position uh, for uh, the right. Ravens. Then you have DK Metcalf. Now, this – Unit has had injury problems in the past. Having Jackson Smith come in and being able to slot in as replacements for either of these two guys if they needed to um, is really good for them. Having three healthy or having three successful or talented running backs when in the past they've also had injuries come at them at the running back position. Mm -hmm. We're not thinking that we're going to have to start Travis Homer this year. If Kenneth Walker goes down, we're hoping that Charbonnet comes in and is able to do this. This unit on offense, to me, is one of the scariest units on offense for any team across the league. And I think just by going off of this unit on offense, I think they can win any game and they have the potential to hold on. They have the potential to win this division. Where that doesn't come to fruition, that is that defense. If the defense doesn't improve in the running department and stopping the run, you're going to have a team that is a very big letdown in a lot of games that they should win. And Geno Smith is going to see regression. Mm -hmm. And when he does see regression, we hope that he doesn't fall off the map and doesn't regress too much. But I think what we saw from him last year tells me, okay, the, the, the big story here is that, yeah, he might regress, but you've surrounded him with a plethora of talent that if he does regress to the point where it's almost unwatchable, your running game might potentially be able to save him. And I think with that in mind that I'm not even thinking of this regression as being the biggest piece for them. The biggest piece for them is that defense because San Francisco has the best yak in the whole, Mm -hmm. arguably the whole league last year. Then you, you're, you're talking about the Rams coming back potentially with a better offense. And then you're still talking about Arizona. They have James Conner. They have DeAndre Hopkins. What weapon is going to be passing to them? And then they're going to be playing the second-place schedule as well. Yeah. And so these are challenges for this team. But I trust Pete Carroll almost as much as I trust any other coach in this league. And I hate saying that coming from a Texas fan. But Pete Carroll knows how to coach. And Pete Carroll has a staff that knows how to coach. And Pete Carroll has taken players that we have looked at and said, okay, what are you going to do with them? And he's turned them into something. He's elevated players to the next level. So when you look Mm -hmm. at the team, um, you know, and you say, okay, is is this possible? He's got aggressive corners. He's got a playmaker back at linebacker. He's got edge rushers, potentially, that could do something. It's almost a complete team for me. And I could see them, if Philadelphia didn't exist, I could see the ceiling for the Seattle Seahawks as being Super Bowl. Yeah, no, it it, it, it all hinges on, on Geno at the end of the day. I mean, mm-hmm. the, and the, the reason that I'm skeptical here is because when push came to the shove, there was a couple games last year when Geno just didn't have it. Mm-hmm. Um, and when it said, Hey, we need to win this game, he just couldn't do it. Now, Grant, the NFC is full of quarterbacks like that. 
You know, mm-hmm. that's what Jones is in New York. That is, I mean, there's only really three quarterbacks you know you hand the ball off that can come back and win this game no matter what in the NFC. In fact, I'm not even sure there's three. So, because Kirk Cousins, you're not giving, not having that belief in it. Right. And that's that's really, I guess, the, the, the thing with this is I think that Geno is, is at the end of the day going to be a middle-of-the-road quarterback. I yeah. think he'll have better fantasy numbers than that because his great receiver. And here's score. to note, too, Joe, speaking of Geno Smith, is that – his passer rating from weeks one to eight was incredible. It was like mm-hmm. 88. From from week nine on, it was about 64. And mm-hmm. so he had an incredible deep ball. He was one of the best deep ball passers in the league last year. If you go back and look at the tape, and anybody that wants to say he's not, he was. Mm-hmm. And you look at what he could have improved is the short game. You went out there and got Jackson Smith, who's the best possession wide receiver coming out of college. So going out there and getting that, having two tight ends that potentially have been in, you know, that know him a little bit better now, there are options. Is Kenneth Walker going to work well with, you know, coming out of the backfield? Charbonnet. I, 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 I don't want to talk up Seattle like I don't want to talk up how good John Wick is as a series in a movie. But this, this team has the potential to just lay you out on Mm -hmm. offense and sometimes for Seattle I think one of the things last year that was really damaging for Seattle as a team because their run game was so bad they could score real fast because they could throw a good deep ball Mm -hmm. when you score too fast but the other team has a good you're gonna lose it's a Cincinnati problem it really is and Cincinnati we saw making the playoffs making the AFC championship game almost going back to a Super Bowl these two teams, to me, are very, very similar to one another in they their, are. what they want to achieve. And I think the only thing holding them back are them. Well, the one has Joe Burrow and the other one doesn't. That's the difference. <laughs> really, when you look between those two last teams. Year, last year, it would have been a really hard sell for you to not say to me, hey, I can get Geno Smith at this price versus Joe Burrow at this price in fantasy. You know, for fantasy, he, he, he's one of the late guys to absolutely target and get. I mean, you can probably give him the ninth, tenth round in most leagues. And when we do our fantasy shows here in a couple of weeks, um, that's going to be one of the guys that, that you know, you'll consistently see me fighting for is Gino. Because, again, he, he's not going to, to necessarily go out and win a game for you in the fourth quarter. But he's also not going to throw it away either. And that was so, his biggest quality last year is he didn't lose the game on turnovers. He made a he did it. Sometimes he mistake, took too easy of passes and threw it short of the sticks and Lockett wasn't willing to push it downfield. That happened a bunch. It's part of why they, they blew leads. But when when they could run the ball, the, the, they were unbeatable. I mean, like and, I said, and that, that's really what you saw. I mean, when Walker got nicked up, it was like week 12 or something, mm-hmm. that was kind of when their skid started. So I think it's Walker, one of the most complete teams on offense. No, they, I would completely agree with that. They're one of the very few teams who are committed to running the ball and doing good at it. And the simple fact is, is I like it. I, I, I like I like the style of football they're built. They, they feel a lot like the Pittsburgh of the West, and I like it. 